In this video, we'll determine a state variable model for a second order circuit and use that model to simulate the response of the circuit to a step input. We'll then measure the states of the circuit resulting from that step input and compare our measurements to the simulation results. First, I'll briefly present the state variable model for a series RLC circuit. This is our circuit of interest. Our input is a voltage at these terminals, and our outputs are the two system states, the voltage across the capacitor and the current through the inductor. These are the state equations for the circuit, and these are the output equations for the circuit. Since we're going to want to look at both states, we'll have two output equations. Here's our physical circuit. We'll use a 47 ohm resistor, a 1 millihenry inductor, and a 0.1 microfarad capacitor. The waveform generator will apply a 2 volt square wave with a low enough frequency to appear to be a step function for all intents and purposes. We'll use channel 1 of our oscilloscope to measure the capacitor voltage, and channel 2 of our oscilloscope will measure the voltage across the resistor. We'll use a math channel in conjunction with this resistor voltage to infer the inductor current. Here are our state equations for these particular values of resistance, inductance, and capacitance. Our A and B matrices are here and here. Our output equations are not dependent upon the circuit element parameters, so they're just the same equations that we showed on the previous slide. Now let's see the results of simulating these equations using MATLAB. So here are our simulated responses for the inductor current and the capacitor voltage. Now let's implement and test the circuit and get some experimental results to compare these with. Here's our circuit. This is our 47 ohm resistor, our 1 millihenry inductor, and our 0.1 microfarad capacitor. We're using channel 1 of the waveform generator to apply a voltage to this terminal of the resistor. Ground is over here. We're using channel 1 of the oscilloscope to measure the voltage across the capacitor. We're using channel 2 to measure the voltage across this resistor. Now, in order to get time t equals 0 correctly on our oscilloscope, I'm going to use an external trigger. That's T1 on your analog discovery. It's this brownish colored wire here, which is going to be at the same terminal as the AWG1 input. As I previously mentioned, I'll use a square wave to create a step response. It'll need a fairly low frequency relative to the response of the circuit, so I selected 500 hertz. To create this 2 volt change from 0 volts to 2 volts, I set the amplitude to 1 and the offset to 1. I'll go ahead and click on Run AWG1 to start applying power to the circuit. On my oscilloscope, I've used a time base of 50 microseconds per division, 500 millivolts per division on both channel 1 and channel 2, and a math channel to infer the inductor current. We want to trigger off the time at which the input step function is applied. Unfortunately, both of our data channels are being used to measure other things, so I set up an external trigger as the source of my trigger so that it gets the signal from the waveform generator. Now time zero will correspond to when the step is applied, which is the same as our definition of time zero in our MATLAB simulations. That'll make it very easy to compare the simulated and actual data. I'll click Run to acquire the data. There's our data. To compare the data with the MATLAB simulations, I'll overlay the plots of the experimental data with the simulations. I can easily do this by exporting the data to a .csv file and then importing it into MATLAB. Click on Export, select a .csv file. We don't need the comments or the headers. Browse to the location where you want to save it and save the file. Now we can load the data into MATLAB using the CSV read command and plot the two sets of data one against the other. Here's a plot of our measured capacitor voltage data overlaid with our previous simulation. The blue solid line is the simulation, and the red dashed line is the data. The data in the simulation agree quite well, given that it's dynamic data. There's some minor differences, but nothing drastic. Likewise, the inductor current data agrees very well with our expectations. Another useful way to present data about system states is to use a state trajectory. The state trajectory is a plot of the states as functions of one another. Here, I've plotted the inductor current versus the capacitor voltage. The plot starts at 0, 0. Both the inductor current and the capacitor voltage are 0 before we apply the step, and goes to 2.0. The final inductor current is 0 amps, and the final capacitor voltage is 2 volts. Time is increasing in the direction shown, although specific time points aren't labeled. 
The path taken by the system states as the response proceeds can be useful in control system design and analysis. For us, at the moment, it's just kind of a nifty plot, especially if you're sort of a nerd like me. <laughs> <laughs>